one of the things you mentioned and that you talk about a lot is nutrition research. And yeah. I am a complete layman. I barely graduated high school. I hear you talk about some of the stuff. You talk about it brilliantly. That's why I like watching your channel. I foolishly throughout my whole life would hear these nutrition studies on the news and foolishly thought that those were there for my benefit. And now I realize they weren't there for my benefit, but more so than that, most of them I think are pretty useless. Can you talk about nutrition science a little bit? Yeah. Well, nutrition science, I'll give it that one. It's a misnomer. It's a complete have. There is no nutrition science. Science, experimental science, is the way that, well, it's one of the ways that human beings can inform on knowledge. What causes what? The way to determine cause and effect is via an experimental protocol. That's not my rules. That's what the scientific fraternity, for want of a better term, have come up with over the last two and a half thousand years or so. And the disciplines have changed very little in terms of what is required. So if I want to determine cause and effect, I need two subpopulations of, if we're, if we're dealing with human beings, which is what we are dealing with here, we need two subpopulations of human beings who at the outset of our study, those two subsets of people have to be identical. Because if they're not, we have uncoupled cause and effect. No matter what we observe, no matter, the, no matter the strength of the observation that we make, if we started with two populations that are not absolutely, utterly identical, you can forget making a claim about cause and effect. That is out with the disciplines of science. And if you say we've got cause and effect evidence here, what you're actually telling me is that you don't know how to do science, you're ill-disciplined, and what these people that are making these cause and effect claims are actually doing is trying to feather their own nests, make themselves important, perpetuate their own careers, make themselves an expert in the field. Let's break down the word expert while we're at it, shall we? X is somebody who is no more and a spurts a drip under pressure. That's what an expert is. Expertise, based on the same word, sure, is a different thing though. Expertise is a skill set, an understanding of a thing that is possessed by a person or isn't possessed by a person. So people at large either understand this about science, it is a discipline, there are rules, you must adhere to the rules to be taken seriously as a scientist, or you're a pseudoscientist, or you're a crackpot. There's not too much gray in there. So when people say, we have studies that prove cause and effect, this causes that, as relates to any heart health outcome in human beings, as that relates to any aspect of the dietary intakes of human beings whatsoever, they are lying to you. Quick interruption, did you know we have an incredible membership site for you called healinghumanity.life we have a special offer going on right now. Learn more at the link in the description. We have courses. We have expert Q&As with the good doctors. We even have a Healing Humanity Heroes Zoom call once a week, highlighting real heroes that will inspire you on a path to healing. The community is wonderful. We're going to be implementing a buddy system so you can be held accountable, recipes, all sorts of great stuff to help you on a path to healing. Learn more at the link in the description below. Or they don't understand that there are no studies out there where they started with two populations of completely identical individuals. We're talking about sets of twins. So first of all, you need identical sets of twins that you can separate, lock in separate labs and keep them in those labs for their entire lifespans because we want to talk about what happens to somebody over their lifespan, don't we? Right. Ergo, we have to control all other confounds, covariates, collinearities, all these other rich threads that make up this tapestry of someone's health outcomes. 
they have to be all the same in both groups. Otherwise, forget it. You're not talking cause and effect. You might be able to talk about associations, which don't prove cause and effect. Of course, you can't talk about associations if you then turn around, make, having made some observations, ignore those observations and publish some numbers that you made up because you adjusted what you observed. That's not, even, that's not even closely akin to science. That is fabrication. Oh, yes, but it's a mathematical procedure, they say, this multivariate adjustment, right. to which I usually say to people, great, since you're such an expert, why don't you tell me what the math is and how that's done exactly? Because I'll tell you what, in 20-something years in academia, I was involved in doing that a number of times myself. Were you? No? Okay, so don't tell me you know, all about multivariate adjustment. Goodness sake. Yeah, it's it's fabrication, basically. So what we've got is bought and paid for theology and no science whatsoever. Anyone that says nutrition science, human nutrition science, what they're telling you by saying human nutrition science, those so three words in one sentence, they're telling you they don't understand the science. And as such, you shouldn't take that person remotely seriously. Right. That might sound harsh, but it's a reality. Science is a discipline. And any time you break any of the disciplines, you completely erode the ability to comment on what it is you're trying to comment on, which is cause and effect. Mm. Mm. It's one of those things that's so clear now to all of these studies over the years. Eggs are great for you. Eggs are going to kill you. Just flip-flopping back and forth. And then when I really think about it, I, it makes so much sense how you describe it. If you had two identical twins from birth, which is nearly impossible to do, but then you, you take like what could almost be a good study if you could do that to actually what they're doing now with these observational studies with food frequency questionnaires. I'm oh, eating strict oh. carnivore for, for 600 days now, and I can't even tell you what I ate like a week ago. I only eat like five things, and they're asking people on mm. the standard American diet what they ate before. It's just, mm. it's craziness. Yeah, absolutely. Also, they start with populations for these prospective cohort studies where they look at incidence of disease versus reported intakes. So you put the nail on the head there straight away that these are reported food intakes, not actual food intakes, and there is a massive difference. And I'm not even talking about people who overtly lie about what they're eating. I'm talking about people with the right attitude, with the right, I'm going to be honest about what I'm eating. They have no idea. So they get it wrong. Food frequency questionnaires are invalid. Anyone that wants to argue otherwise, again, does not understand statistical inference or scientific methodology or, or anything much. Actually, th these people are theologues who are indulging in confirmation bias. People want bad news about their bad habits, uh, good news about their bad habits. 